Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince, is the latest adventure of the illustrious, puzzle-solving and platform-climbing heroes of Trine. The adventures of Trine are known for their challenging puzzles, lush and wondrous landscapes, and of course, the three heroes, Amadeus the Wizard, Pontius the Knight, and Zoya the Thief. With all their different abilities woven together, the trio make for a perfect band of heroes to face troublesome villains and save the day. In the Nightmare Prince, the three are reunited once more to track down and rescue Prince Celius, a ward of the Astral Academy, whose nightmares have begun to come to life in the waking world, terrorizing anyone who gets too close to him. As you adventure in the world of Trine, you are able to play as any of the heroes, changing from one to another with a simple push of a button. You can do so even in mid-air if you find yourself in dire need of Zoya's rope or Pontius's sword. As the story unfolds, you'll discover that the clever heroes are able to solve puzzles in different ways as there is not always just one solution to the conundrum at hand. Each hero has their own idea of how to best solve their problems, but when they work together as a team, they are even more undefeatable. For example, Amadeus may conjure his box and place it on a seesaw, and then Pontius can stomp on it. The falling box then catapults Pontius way up high. As the story begins, our heroes each have their own set of skills. Once you explore the world and defeat enemy encounters, you gain experience, unlocking not only optional upgrades to the hero's abilities, but also essential new skills needed to save Prince Celius. Amadeus the Wizard was studying at the Astral Academy when he gained his share of the mystical powers of Trine. He has never mastered even a tiny part of the fireball spell, which other wizarding students seem to learn in the blink of an eye. Instead, Amadeus has an innate talent for conjuring boxes, which he can also levitate. He can use these boxes to climb on, to hit switches, attach to spike walls, and stomp them down on enemies. Zoya can even attach her rope to Amadeus's box. In the story of the Nightmare Prince, Amadeus unlocks new spells, learning to conjure other useful items, such as a metallic ball, which you can use to roll around on unfriendly terrain, or which can even be transformed into a wrecking ball, with a little help from Pontius and Zoya. And the plank, which Amadeus can rotate around and place in clever ways. Besides conjuring, Amadeus can also use the Blink ability to cross large gaps or escape from villainous monsters. Pontius, on the other hand, is a brave and honorable knight known for his skill with not only his sword, but also his shield, which he can use to deflect enemy attacks, redirect rays of light and flowing water, or even help his friends by letting them climb on it. The shield can even be used as a kind of parachute, allowing you to float gently across large gaps. Pontius can also stomp down with his full weight on seesaws, breakable platforms, and on his enemies. He can charge forward to tackle enemies, or break through walls with his knightly force. In this episode of our story, he can also summon the Dream Shield a copy of his own shield, which can be placed anywhere and will stay there as long as you want, which, as you can see, can be quite useful. Last but not least, we have Zoya, our cunning thief, although she detests the title and would prefer to be called an entrepreneur. She is known for her bow and arrow and her infinitely useful rope. She can use her rope to swing around quickly from place to place, climb to new heights, or pull objects around. While looking for the Nightmare Prince, Zoya can create rope bridges, which she and her friends can use to cross gaps or climb upwards. She gains new elemental arrows, with which she can not only attack her enemies, but also use to manipulate the environment. 
For example, she can freeze a volatile platform in place. Finally, Zoya will discover the fairy rope ability. Levitating objects or even enemies tied to the other end of her rope. This will prove extremely useful for solving puzzles or making the monstrous nightmares helpless as they float suspended in midair. Here, the heroes kindly demonstrate a single puzzle in a quite overgrown abandoned garden. Zoya first uses her rope to drag the seesaw where she needs it. Then Amadeus conjures a box and places it on the seesaw. And finally, Pontius can stomp on the seesaw to fling himself up where he needs to be. Thank you, heroes. But the heroes face more than seesaws and inconveniently placed switches. They will also encounter dangerous, nightmarish creatures summoned by Prince Celius. Fortunately, all of the heroes can now engage in combat when you make use of their new skills. Amadeus can throw his conjured objects at enemies stomp them down to vanquish monsters, or use them to block attacks. He can also levitate monsters and throw them around. Who would have thought levitation was such a powerful wizarding skill? Zoya, of course, uses her new elemental arrows. The fire arrows set the monsters slightly on fire, while the ice one freezes them and objects into place. These arrows are particularly useful against elemental enemies. Our beloved entrepreneur can also learn how to fire critical arrows, which can cause devastating damage to enemies. With the fantastical new fairy rope, she can levitate her enemies and just watch them float away. And for a new defensive measure, she can now somersault out of harm's way. And finally, we have Pontius a stalwart champion of combat. For defense, Pontius can point his shield in any direction and also deflect projectiles. His new lightning sword is a powerful weapon against the monsters, with an electrical shock that will leave almost any villain stunned. While his regular stomp works wonders at smashing enemies, he now has a powerful frost stomp which freezes enemies and objects. And when he charges at enemies, he sends them flying across the room. This can help Pontius out of tight spots, should he ever find himself surrounded by more than he can handle. The heroes of Trine will need all these skills during their quest. Some of the perilous enemies they face will be their very own nightmares. While the road ahead turns ever darker, thankfully Amadeus, Pontius and Zoya can rely on each other as they face their nightmarish foes. You can now experience the magic of Trine in three different ways. Solitary adventurers can embark on their journeys in single player mode, choosing which one of the heroes you want to play as at any moment. You'll of course need to switch between them to make the most of their unique skills in different situations. As with previous adventures of Trine, there will be a classic cooperative mode where you and your friends all select one of the three heroes. However, only one of each hero can be present at the same time, working together in search of Prince Celius. And now, for the first time ever, in Trine 4, you'll be able to go on your adventure with up to four heroes in the unlimited mode, with any combination of heroes you like. That means, if you want four Pontiuses to ride pumpkins into the sunset, you can do exactly that. I hope you've enjoyed this short tale of what it is like to experience the magic of Trine 4. Now, it's up to you to find Prince Celius. Bring him back to the safety of the Astral Academy. Trine 4, the Nightmare Prince, and Trine, the Ultimate Collection, will both be available on October 8th.